Welcome to episode one of our mini series on doing a kitchen addition and remodel. We're gonna do the design, the demolition, and the framing on this project, but we're not the contractors, the homeowners are. Today, we're gonna check out the existing house and come up with a plan. It's Saturday morning and I'm here at my friend Matt and Susanna's house and they wanna do a kitchen remodel plus expansion out onto this existing deck. So today we're gonna to make some drawings that I'm then gonna convert into digital drawings and then I think we're gonna help them with the framing phase at least of this project. So let's get started by looking at what they have. This is Matt, hey man after my own heart, <laughs> dish warrior. I don't know, but yeah, that's kinda of what I do at home. Stuck granola to the pan. Yeah, see what I would do is get a spatula on that uh, though. Yeah, that's probably uh probably the right thing. Pro tip. Not a pro tip. enough hot water. <laughs> Ooh, man, there it is. Again, it's early Saturday morning. <laughs> Hence uh these guys are really dressed up. Yeah. So Susanna, Matt, we're gonna start measuring. Just wanted to introduce you guys while you're not dressed up. Thought it'd be fun. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate you doing that. So the general idea is that we're gonna make this kitchen go all the way out to the edge of this railing, which is gonna make it twice as big and give them room for this kind of center island, which is really nice for entertaining, cooking. They're gonna get rid of all the cabinetry that's existing, get new cabinets, new counters. Well, but the general idea is blow this thing out, lots of windows, lots more room. What I'm looking for now is where are the bearing points? We have a column on the corner here. We have a column here, which weirdly enough is about exactly where we need it to be. Um, the way the load is gonna work on these roofs is really it's gonna be a point load in those two spots. So it's really nice that you have big brick columns already. Um, yeah, if we come out straight out from the wall here, well, it is about a foot and a half off. So we gotta decide how important is it that you line up with the existing wall? Cause it's gonna cost a lot more money to move or add another post like this. And it may kind of mess up your symmetry of all your columns from looking from that way. As we'll, far as like cantilever type stuff. Yeah. Do that. That's yeah. So basically if we go directly over the column that's here, your kitchen may just have a little step in it. Right. Um, which doing in addition, you know, you got to weigh cost versus right. final, you know, product sometimes. Sometimes cost is the more important thing. Sometimes yeah. final product is. So we'll check that out and measure the span. Yeah, absolutely. Another question, do we try to just put subfloor over the deck and the decking that's here? Or do we just chop the whole deck off over there? where we want the addition and just start fresh. We're gonna check out the underneath, like the structural, like the size of your joist, spacing and all that. It, it may be easier to just get rid of the deck where you want the right. addition right. and put brand new two by tens, or it may be better to keep it. I don't know yet. Well, you're the pro, so, so we'll go with your decision. <laughs> well, I thought you were the pro, wait well, a minute. <laughs> hey, we'll, uh, I, we know it has to be insulated. And, it does have to know, be insulated. So it, Cause we're gonna have a lot of air going underneath. You know what? It's not bad, Matt. It's it's in the bubble, so uh, we could potentially just shim it up on top of that post. Let's check this side. This is, again, it's going down a little bit, but we could shim it up. Yeah, let's check in the, in the middle here. All right, you can see in the middle now, uh, we're a quarter bubble. So basically between these two posts out here, your deck is whoop, doing that number a little bit. I think you mentioned that when we bought the house. Yeah. <laughs> that day was kind of sloping. Yeah, it's in the funny when you're a builder, like you see things that aren't straight, really, it's like really jumps out at your eyeball. I think I remember you walking through here originally when we bought, were looking to buy the house, and you said, I feel like this is sagging. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't feel it. But, yeah. But you did. With using our existing deck here, we'll have to build up probably an inch and a half or two inches with Advantech and or some, you know, framing material. Uh, so we flush out with the subfloor that's in here already. And that's just uh, like guess and check kind of thing. Okay. Just figure it out. The roof we're talking about adding will come off very similar to how this tees off the main roof line, giving you more dried space out the side of the house. Oh, there's the old... The old Fuji. The old Fuji. Yeah. Matt rides with me, or I ride with him. Yeah. Pretty much beast mode on the bike. 
I don't know about Beast that. That's road. rude. That's rude. Whatever, you did a whole uh, Iron Man. Yeah, I haven't okay. done much since. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So, here's the culprit of the sag. And this is some good structural stuff. Uh, the beam or girder holding all of these joists is the same size as the joists. And it's carrying the weight of, like, ten joists. Um... So these are two by eights, which is okay for an eight foot span on 16 centers, which those are. So I, I think that's okay. You got, you got bolts into your house, you know, and I don't know about that spacing. That's like five feet on center. So we'd probably add, you know, I would say twice as many as are there just to be safe. Mm -hmm. It's always better to be safe is what I found. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so... We could either do what I said with the girder or we could dig one footing here and put one post to support the center here. Then mm -hmm. we'd probably still need to like double the girder. Third option, <laughs> I keep thinking of things. Uh, why don't we just run um, an LVL below the deck joist that just hangs on a giant metal bracket on each of these posts? If you don't mind having like a dropped girder that's, you know, we'd wrap it in some sort of finish material. Right. Uh, we could just, you know, shove all those joists up, straighten your, and not have to do anything, you know, as far as cutting the existing yeah. joists. That might be the easiest thing. Ding, ding, ding. Option yeah. three. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds like... Uh, sounds good. Yeah. Um, that's why it, it helps just to stand here and just stare. Yeah. Just like look at it. That's what we're doing. You've got the uh, visualization from years of building, so I trust your visual visualization. And I'm sure people in the comments are going to also, you know, add some ideas like they usually do. Yeah. So I've actually gotten a lot of great ideas out of the comments. People yeah. have have That's commented awesome. something. I'm like, oh shoot, <laughs> why didn't I Keep think? Keep commenting. Of that? <laughs> yeah, why didn't I think of that? So you know, turns out having like a hundred thousand brains thinking about something yeah, is better than one. Yeah. No. Who would have thought? I, hey, I got a question. How far? down do you need to drop to get enough insulation to kind of well you need r19 in your floor by code here um if you do spray foam that's only like six inches okay uh regular bad insulation you can get an r19 in a two by eight okay so that's fine okay so this is really nice we can just get on the roof with what I'd call a homeowner grade Costco <laughs> step stool. There you go. That's a rare thing. Hey. And for you know getting lumber up there, it's gonna make it really easy. Yeah, so very low uh, kids don't do this at home, but climb on roofs all the time here. Hold my phone at least. <laughs> all right, we're going on. Yeah. I'm used to doing this when, with all these trees here. Oh yeah. We get lots of uh, leaves on this roof, so the, it's easy to get the leaf blower up here and blow them all that off. That is nice. I once had a roof that had a 14, 12 pitch. Oh yeah, and, and I, Dude, I, I did. I climbed up that thing and would leaf blow it. And it was scary Ooh. as you know what. Yeah, I don't, get on, I don't get close to the edges, so. We're up on the roof, and this is why we came up here. I wanted to check out what's hidden just over the ridge. And this is what most builders do. You put all of your roof vents and terminations on the back side of the roof so you don't see them from the street. They did a nice job of that. So we got to figure out which of these are still in use and then they'll have to get probably extended through whatever sort of roof we mm -hmm. tee in. Uh, I would say the center of our ridge is going to be like, uh oh, <laughs> my shoe came <laughs> off. Don't do this at home kids. With flip flops. Yeah. So the center of the ridge is going to be like right here. So, you know, like that'll be under the roof. This is probably just an attic vent. Yeah, fan. Uh, van. We may just cover that up and, and put it another one in somewhere else. Okay. Maybe the easiest thing there. And then these are your plumbing vents here and here. And uh, they're pretty easy to just extend mm -hmm. so that they come out at the top of the new roof. And uh, this is what I wanted to see. Is, so yeah, so they've got this just flashed under the shingle layer there. Um, I'm not sure where it drains or if it doesn't drain. <laughs> uh, I think it drains. Well, we just want to make sure it, it's not tilted towards your uh, new face shower yeah. gutter. So yeah, we'll just, uh, just saws all that thing off wherever and, and, and lap flashing up under 
the uh, the new roof line this way so that it basically just keeps doing what it's doing if it's working I mean we may just say take the whole thing down yeah and then do something on this section later yeah you could I mean you could do that um, we do like it covered because we can sit out there yeah in the winter with the fire behind yeah. the porch and uh, yeah yeah and we're not going to step on that ever because Never. because we we don't know if that would hold a person up. Mm, yeah, probably not. So obviously the new addition is going to have new shingles. Yeah. Um, would you recommend just blowing out and doing the entire house okay. match or is that's that gonna... a great question? And I haven't really looked that close, but I'm looking now, and um, no, these definitely have some life left in them. Okay. Um, I would say like. 10 plus years. I would replace the ridge shingles. Somebody's already done a little repair there. Um, the ridge shingles right where they have that crease in them are looking a little bare. Basically the gravel just keeps the sun from breaking down the asphalt layer. So if your, if your gravel goes away, like right there, it's you can see the asphalt. Okay. Um, the sun, the UV rays are gonna be breaking those down at a way faster rate. Okay. Right there, I would hit that guy one time with a hammer and Lexel right over that, seal it up. You got some Lexel, right? I do, I do, it's <laughs> magic. <laughs> we had to fix the glass table and the thing hasn't moved since we used the Lexel. Nice. Nice recommendation. There's another one there. I don't know why roofers a lot of times don't seal over the top of the nails on the ridge caps like that. Like I always do that and somehow it doesn't leak a whole lot, but it's gotta leak a little bit. It's gotta go somewhere, right? I know, so I would just Lexel on all those real quick. Just even before, right there even, two nails. I wanna give some attention while we're working out here. Um, there's no like cricket built out of this to shed water side to side and, and it's not leaking obviously. Somebody's built up really nice with some tar. At the least, what we can do is get more tar and just build it up to where it's not a pond. I mean, that would be the simplest uh -huh. sort of uh, not professional fix, but it would, it would do it would a lot work. better. And this, you know, otherwise... Standing water is not good. Yes, that's right. So, um, otherwise, you could build, like, a little roof line out to here that sheds water. But I think if that's holding water, if we just build it up and, and make the water run out one side or the other, you'd be way better off for basically zero dollars. Yeah, we could get, like, um, just, like, literally a bucket of tar. And just, like, I mean, you can tell it's, like... It's an inch deep, so if you build up an inch, you know, mm. to where it just ran Push out. Push it off on the side. Yeah. Tar sounds better. messy. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll let you do that. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just coach you from afar. There you go. More tar, Matt. Thicker. Hey, let's jump off your roof. Yeah. Y'all yeah, go That's first. usually what I do. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> usually do it with a backpack blower on. Oh so. yeah, <laughs> sweet. Right now we're drawing an elevation drawing, a, a sketch I'd call it. And we're just gonna draw the windows in like Matt's talking about. And, and what you're talking about is basically, you know, just glass. Right, as much glass as we can With get. maybe a lower piece like that. Now these will have to be tempered down here uh, by code. If they're less than 18 inches off the floor, they have to be tempered glass, that's code. Uh, you know, there's our drop girder we talked about. There's your existing deck, uh, and there's our roof, and we could just do like lap siding up through there. Um, and right now, fixed glass is the way to go if you want a lot of glass, because if you have to order windows, you'd be in the problem we're in right now. You'd probably wait six months or a year for custom windows, uh, unless you want to get the really expensive ones, which are still available. Just like when you couldn't buy a bike last year because uh, of COVID, everybody wanted a bike. You could still really buy. Ten thousand dollar bikes, you just couldn't buy like a five hundred. Yeah, yeah. Everybody bought those. The so same thing yeah. windows now. So yep. talking about a lot of glass. You're gonna have a French door, you know, that'll open up here. This is showing the door like open. Right. Uh, so you can go out to this deck, and then you'll have some windows on this end. Correct. As well. Yeah, south facing. So as much natural yeah. light coming in as yeah. Our... And south facing is good. West facing can get you in trouble if you have mm -hmm. a lot of glass because it'll, you know, the setting sun, the angle of the sun will get to a point where it's just is just beaming directly into your right. living space and you get a lot of passive heating sometimes too much you feel like you're getting like cooked under a magnifying glass like right. an ant right. Right. right so uh south facing is great yep so, 
center of the bed. We'll go ahead and sketch in your cabinets here. So we've got a little sketch made, <clears throat> and this doesn't look like much, but we don't need much. The structure is existing. We can come back and take exact measurements if we're framing this thing. So I guess my question is, as we're talking through this, is there a stage of frame it, then knock this down, or do you have to, obviously with LVL, probably have to knock it down first? How's that? How's yeah, that so there is a certain order of events. We could do this entire roof out here before getting rid of that wall. And that's kind of what I'd recommend just okay. so that, you know, this is Dry dried in. in before you knock that out. Um, and what we'll do is do a temporary um, beam right in here, which is basically just a two by four with a bunch of legs down to your floor to support the roof load. Then we can take that wall completely out and it'll just be sitting on these temporary two by four legs, slap the header in, and then we can remove our temporary header that's a couple feet in. Yeah, All right. and then hopefully you can get glass quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think we have what we need here also. to start drawing. Yeah. So what we'll do is I'll get it mostly drawn up, then you guys can come over, we'll sit at the computer, have a couple maybe adult beverages or we'll something, say, you know, hang out. And yeah, we'll uh, kind of finalize that so it's ready for the building inspection department. Awesome. We'll build it. Let's do it. Or somebody will build it. <laughs> we'll get it built somehow. <laughs> I'm back in my office slash sunroom. I've got my hand-drawn plan. And I'm gonna take that and convert it into a more professional looking plan that Susanna can turn into the building department using Home Designer Pro by Chief Architect. This is the 2022 Pro version. I think it was about 1200 bucks. I'm gonna start a new project. Uh, let's get going. Got the general layout here and I'm gonna to go to 3D mode now and that'll help us get a big picture of the outside and how it's gonna look. This program doesn't do structural engineering but I just can look stuff up in the span charts of these LVLs uh, here and the one below the deck and we'll put in a proposed cabinet layout and that's basically all we need besides dimensions to basically get a permit. posts, but that's the idea. Here I've recreated these posts using the build framing and post. And let's take a look here. I'm probably gonna have to adjust that down quite a lot. Like that. Let's look better. Now we'll just copy and paste that. And I use the same texture as there in real life. And we'll actually, we'll copy that. Uh, because the whole house is white brick. That wraps it up for the planning phase of our kitchen addition remodel project for Susanna and Matt. And those plans were enough to get a building permit here in Haywood County where we live. The inspectors did come by the house and check that out as well. And from what I understand, they even watch our YouTube channel, which should make it even more interesting. And this project was a challenge. We've done a lot of it at the point I'm recording this outro to the first video. So make sure to check back for the rest of the videos in this series. I think there'll be about about 10 videos now and then some more later once it gets dried in and we continue working on it for them. Lots to learn for us and for you. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. That does help us out on YouTube and we will see you on the next one.